Hi, it's Martin, and welcome to another video on my Knit365 YouTube channel. Today's video is my February roundup. It is currently March the 3rd, and it's a Friday, and I've got a Friday off. This never happens. I usually record on a Monday on my non-work day, and um, it's my birthday weekend. So Mark and I have taken today off work. Um, I'm also off on Monday, which would be my non-work day. Um, so we've got a bit of a long weekend planned, which is super lovely, and I'm very excited for lots of fun. Um, more on that in a bit, maybe. Um, not because I don't want to talk to you about it, but I need to get through the introduction, otherwise I'll forget things. <laughs> um, so yeah, Friday the 3rd of March, and I'm sitting down to talk to you about all the things that I got up to in February. The bag of shame is here. <clears throat> more on that in a moment. <clears throat> I'm much better. I feel better. I hope I sound better. Although, <laughs> I'm a hoot. I started sneezing this morning um, and feel itchy. So it's hay fever season. <laughs> I've been to have my hair cut for my birthday. Um, and I think the trees are starting to blossom. Um, so I've just got over my cough and my cold. I feel much better. And um, I think I'm now going to start sneezing for hay fever. So I've taken some antihistamines. Mark <laughs> is about this short from putting me out on the roof, I think. Um, this short? <laughs> this far away from putting me out on the roof. But there we are. I, I, in fairness, I have been ill for a while. So the fact that we're now going from um, cough, cold and snot, sorry, um, into hay fever is quite hilarious. For me, not so much for him. Um, <laughs> but there we are. I'm very lucky though, um, because I suffer from tree pollen. So my hay fever season is like end of February till April time, and then I'm done. So my brother, uh, one of my brothers, really suffers with grass pollen. So in the summer, barbecues, outdoor, he really suffers, bless him. Um, but I'm there like, hey, my hay fever's done, thank you. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a tangent. We did that on the live. I started the live last week and ended up on a tangent about the UK pharmacy system. Very random. This is not going to become a medical podcast. <laughs> I'm feeling really chaotic today because I've got a list of things that I want to do um, today. None of them knitting related, really. Um, and I've got a list and I'm like trying to work out. I'm delayed recording this because the washing machine was on, which is literally just the other side of the camera. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling a bit, there's stuff here that I need to show you. It's usually all neatly laid out for the sections of the podcast. Not today. I've literally just like chucked it on the, um, on the little kitchen island and, um, yeah, <laughs> you'll have to take me as you find me today. Um, but thank you very much for giving me a little bit of your time to watch. Um, if you are a new subscriber, you are very welcome. We've had a bit of an influx of subscribers lately. So I think we're just over 8,250, 8,000 and a quarter, um, which is just amazing. So thank you very much if you're new here and for subscribing and giving me a little bit of your time. This video for today is what, as my roundup follows a standard format of works in progress, finished objects and... Um, stash top up acquisitions, although I am on a yarn ban, but I do have yarn to show you. <laughs> of course I have. Um, and of course, if you are a returning viewer, thank you very much for coming back and giving me more of your time. Um, there were two videos, I think, in February. Um, my February roundup, no, January roundup, <laughs> and then the live video that we did. February was a bit of a crazy month. Let's slow the pace. I feel like I've just talked at you at pace. Let, let me have a sip of coffee. You can catch up. I honestly feel so wild this morning. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, February is just a bit of a crazy month um, with work especially. And I don't really talk about my work because it's very different. I work in a corporate job. Um, I work for a financial provider, financial services provider, and I manage a team of project managers in customer services. That's kind of as much as I talk about when I've mentioned it in the past, but it's been incredibly busy um, in February. And this channel is the Knit365 channel because it's me talking about what I get up to because I want to do a bit of knitting or crochet, no spinning, um, every day. And that's where Knit365 came from. But there's been 
in February. I'm not going to say half of February, but there's been a lot of days in February when I've done no crafting at all because I've just come home from work and I feel like a zombie. And crafting is absolutely my downtime. But I've just, I've literally like laid on the sofa or laid on the bed and like, I can't, I can't, I can't concentrate. So I've not done a great deal of crafting, but I have been swatching. I don't think I've shown you these before. So if I've shown this in another video, I am sorry for the duplication, but I don't think I've shown them. Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So I'm trying to get my head around that. Um, so yeah, February has been a bit of a, <clears throat> a funny month. Um, it's a shorter month as well. Three days less than January, I think. I'm not doing the maths now. Um, so there's a little bit less crafting time, but work has just been incredibly busy and I've not had as much crafting time as I would have liked. So we do have, I've got some finished objects to show you because I helped a friend out. Um, I don't have them to show you. I've helped a friend out and I've given them away. I'll show you that in a moment when we get into finished objects. I'll pop a picture on screen. Um, and I've not made a great deal of progress on some of my whips. So this might be a shorter video. <laughs> But again, if you're new here, this is my sit down and ramble about what I've been up to in the month. Um, and I like to think it's quite real life. Like I try not to edit mistakes that like, I probably should record the beginning again and slow the pace down <laughs> when I've rambled at you at pace. Um, but it's, it, this is me. And I try to be as genuine as I can on my podcast. And if you meet me in real life, you're like, yep, he's just as crazy in real life as he is on the podcast. Um, so I think that's enough of the introduction. Um, I'm going to have another sip of my coffee. So I think this will be a shorter episode. Um, <laughs> I say that, we'll probably still end up at an hour. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope that you're all well. Thank you so much for your support. For those of you that joined me on the live, we did the live last week. Um, and we did it 11pm UK time, which was 6pm Eastern in America. Um, and there was nearly 200 people join me live and we chatted and it's lovely that you guys can then leave comments and I can respond to them because of course this is very one way now. I'm sitting down chatting to my, excuse me, chatting to my phone and I can't interact with you. Whereas on the live, I really like this interaction. So I'm loving doing that. Um, so thank you for those that join me and for those that have watched it um, back on the playback. That was great fun. So yeah. More on that, there's another live coming now at the end of March, because I'm really enjoying doing that. But more on that also with the knit along, crochet along. So stay tuned for that. So <clears throat> let's get to it. Um, I like to start these videos with a declaration of my works in progress. I feel it's important that we share the number. And I have 10 works in progress, which is one up from, I think I had nine in, Jan nine in January and I've got 10 in February because of my um, granny cardigan, which I will show you in a moment. It's so close to being finished. Like if I stayed up another hour last night, it might have been a finished object, which I do realize is in March, not February, which is why I was like, no, 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 don't. I just spotted this gray hair, it's gonna annoy me. The joys are getting old, right? You're always ill, hay fever and gray in your beard. Um, tangent again. <laughs> You see the way my mind is going today. Um, so yeah, I have 10 works in progress and yeah, it's just a bit crazy. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get that into, I wanna try and keep that in single figures this year. I said in some of my previous videos, I don't really wanna cast on all the things, but I also want to cast on all the things and I am going to cast on two new things in March. Yes, sorry, three new things in March. I'm going to cast on a new Toff doll because the next woman in Making Women Who Making Women Who Made History series is due out in March. So I'm going to make that doll and I'm going to do a Toff doll cal, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. So I'm going to cast that on, which means I need to finish the current doll, which is here. Um, and I want to cast on, I want to cast on at least one shawl, maybe two shawls. I'm itching to cast on a worsted weight shawl, <clears throat> five, six mil needles. It's gonna fly off the needles, I think. And like the yarn has been sitting in my stash calling to me. I'm not gonna talk about it or show it today because it's not a new cast on. So, but that will, 
if I finish my granny and I finish my tough girl, I'm down to eight, then I can cast on two. Oh, I might be allowed. Anyway, <laughs> I need to finish some things. I'm hoping March is a longer month and I've got um, some travel time because I'm going to EAYF, um, East Anglia Yarn Festival. So I'll have some downtime at the shows as well. So I'm hoping I can finish some things. But I want to try and keep my, my whips around 10. 9 or 10, single figures, I think would be great. Um, at one point last year, those of you that have been here for a while, we were up to 18, I think. Now, granted, my whips is down because I frogged some things inside. They're never going to get made. So I haven't finished all of those things, but I'm, I'm getting there. Um, so let's move straight on. So I'm going to talk about two finished objects that I helped a friend make. And then I'm going to get the bag of shame out because I haven't finished any of my projects. <laughs> so I'm going to pop a picture on screen now and you will recognise these very popular characters. Hi, it's Editing Martin. I told you this video was going to be cra crazy and chaotic. Um, I don't actually have a photo of the things that I finished. <laughs> so they were eight inch high models of Hedwig and Harry from the Harry Potter series. They were about the size of my fist. They were quite big and I don't have any pictures. Um, so there we go. <laughs> so I'm going to hand you back to him as to all the reasons why um, he didn't like making that project. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry. I can't actually show you. You'll just have to use your imagination that they were large. Obviously a white owl and then um, yeah, back to him. So I made these for a friend of a friend. Basically, they're not my style. I wouldn't choose to crochet them. Um, I'm not going to be a snob. I absolutely think acrylic yarn has a place. And I've made acrylic items for the kids. And um, I made Mark's mum a massive giant blanket one year in acrylic yarn. Acrylic yarn absolutely has a place. But this acrylic yarn in that kit, oh, it was... Some acrylic yarn is really soft. And you won't necessarily know that it's acrylic. This felt plastic. I didn't like it at all. The yarn was very splitty. It wasn't great. Um, interestingly, um, so my very good friend, Rian, we've known each other... 25 years? Like a lot, she's probably my oldest friend. She's a crocheter, but she only crochets, which I can't really do. She crochets garments and like flat and like perfect edges. And she makes really lovely crochet things, but she can't do am amigurumi, as she says. Now, a friend of hers, the, uh, the daughter is obsessed um, and wanted to make those items. Um, so they bought the kit. The mum was going to learn to crochet in order to make the owl, for example, and decided that she couldn't do it. So said to Rian, oh, you're a crocheter. Can you help me out? And Rian tried and then messaged me. She's like, you're going to have to make these for me. <laughs> um, and I've had them, in fairness, about six months. <laughs> so um, I saw Rian um, a couple of weekends ago and she's like, can I have those things, please? I'm like, I haven't started them, but yes. So one week in February, I basically spent crocheting up um, Harry and the owl. Um, not my usual thing that I would crochet, as I said. I very much love doing my amigurumi and my toy, uh, my my toft toys, but they're kind of, they're characterless. I don't usually do character-y type things um, and, and not them. So, but I did it to help a friend out. So they were very, very grateful, but it, they are finished objects. I don't have them. They weren't for me. They were to help a friend out. Um, and yeah, so I did that, but I did lose a week of crafting time for myself because ironically, that was a week that work was okay. <laughs> and I felt like I had time to craft and then I couldn't really craft because I had to do those. But I, it was good. I helped a friend out and that's the most important thing. You know me, I'm happy to help out wherever I can and try and be that good friend. So um, yeah, they're done. So I have got two finished objects, but I'm kind of going to draw a line under that now because I did them to help a friend out and I'm basically going to get my bag of shame out. Because <laughs> I haven't, got, maybe this is the thumbnail. Um, because I haven't done any of my own finished objects. So I have zero finished objects on my whip list to share with you. I love this bag. This is my, um, I survived 2020 thanks to knitting. Um, I got this from Beautiful Knitters, 
which is a gorgeous yarn shop in London. I'm contemplating seeing if I can convince Mark that we need to go to that area of London. We are in that area of London, actually, on Sunday, because we're going to see Wicked. Of course we are, for my birthday, for the 43rd time. <laughs> But the Yarn Shop Beautiful Knitters is in Pimlico, which is the next district over from Victoria, which is where Wicked is. So I might see if I can get... I need a birthday skein of yarn, don't I? I know half of you are now shouting, yes, you need a birthday skein of yarn. And half of you are like, I thought you weren't buying any yarn. That would probably be gift yarn. Oh, hang on. He's in... Mark? Yeah. Can we go knitting shop, wool shopping this weekend? You haven't planned any? Yeah. Could we? Oh, How can I refuse? <laughs> I'd quite like to go to Beautiful Knitters. Where is it? Pimlico. One stop away from Wicked. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, there we go. Maybe. Anyway, this is my <laughs> I Survived 2020 bag because I bought some yarn from the shop um, when it reopened. Um, it was a weird time, like thinking all that far back like post pandemic we had masks and one-way systems and there's a video i did a little local yarn shop tour but they gave me this bag when i bought the yarn and i i have worn this before as my bag of shame i've got no finished objects so the bag of shame makes return but i keep this bag i take it to work so i pop my coffee cup in and then a crochet project some yarn whatever i'm knitting on something small that if i can grab 15 minutes in the middle of the day. I always try and encourage my team to take a good break in the middle of the day, at least. You know, like people like, you work in an office, you work through lunch, that kind of thing, but you take a break, it's good. It kind of refreshes you for the afternoon. So I always try and take something with me. Um, often my tough stuff is brilliant to take because I can just do 15 minutes on an arm. You can tell Amelia's not sewn up. Um, or a body. So I take my bag of shame with me. Again, a bit of a tangent there, wasn't it? But the bag of shame is out because I haven't finished anything. I'm just going to sit with my shame for a moment and have another sip of tea. I also think it was inevitable because if you watch the January video, you know I finished seven things. <laughs> so I feel like I did so much in January. February was always going to be a bit of an anticlimax. But I'm invigorated. I also I was also ill in February as well. So, and you know me, no pressure, right? It's it's knitting. It will get done. When I joke, when I had 18 works in progress, I'm absolutely not stressed out by the fact that I've got 18 things languishing around the flat. It'll all get done. It's just knitting. So I'm absolutely fine with that. Not finishing anything, but it does mean I want to have a good March because I've got lots of things that I want to get off my needles, including Mark's jumper so that I can get more things on the needles. That's the plan. So let's go straight into works in progress. I don't have a great deal to share with you today. Um, the things that I said I was gonna work on last month, I have a book that I write things down, I tick them off. So I said I was gonna work on Mark's Argyle sweater last month and I didn't. I didn't even take it out of the bag. And I think that was symptomatic of being ill and work. So I do want to work on that this month. Um, I said I was gonna work on Amelia Earhart. So for those of you that didn't watch last month's video, I told you this was chaotic. Um, I am making Amelia Earhart. She is from the Toft Ed's Dolls collection. And she is part of the Making Women Who Made History series, and I just love her. She is so cute. Um, so last month, I'd finished the doll. We've done arms. I think I'd finished this, these bits last month. So I'd finished arms and legs. There's yarn everywhere. Arms and legs. Um, so I just needed to do the decoration. Um, these arms are the ones with fingers. So I love them, but they're very fiddly. They're like four stitch rounds. Um, <clears throat> so I'd finished that last month and then this month I needed to do everything else to finish it. And 
literally like random bits of yarn everywhere. I need to tidy my table up. So um, I've done her trousers. <laughs> Finished the trousers. This was something that I did at work. I think I did like this bit one lunch hour, then I did this bit the other lunch hour. Um, so two, two days worth of crochet. So I finished the trousers and I've started her jacket, which um, you then crochet bits here and here, and then you crochet a longer bit in the middle, but they're not joined together. And then these outer bits fold down and then where it folds down, you've got a hole here. That's the armhole. I think that's the construction. Um, but what I talked about Rian being a really good crocheter, I'm talking about Rian because she does sometimes watch these videos and she might not be expected to be mentioned, friend of the podcast. Um, I can't crochet straight. Like I've had the amount of times I ripped this out because, and you can see there's a little, I really struggle with the turning chain. And then am I meant to go in the turning chain or in the next one? Like I can absolutely do crochet in the round. I can do loop stitch. I can create hair. Can I crochet flat? <laughs> Clearly not, which is why I'm really excited by the crochet along. Um, again, I'll talk about that at the end of the video because I think it'll teach me to do something flat. Um, I've made one shawl before and it was like a virus style shawl. So it carries on, um, section by section so it's easier to know and you're not necessarily working in a straight line whereas this we're going to be making a straight line one edge and then a, an, an increase the other so I'm really excited and we'll be getting Hannah along hopefully onto a video to talk about that so I'm going to ask Hannah my questions about yarn placement um but yeah so I have done some work on Amelia but if I'm honest this was last week end of the month, I was like, I've got nothing to talk to YouTube about. What am I going to do? Um, so I did the trousers and started the jacket. So I don't think I've got a lot left on that one. This is coming to London with me though, um, because while we're in London, we're going to London, obviously to see Wicked, um, but we're there Saturday, Sunday, Monday. <clears throat> um, and I like to find a little coffee shop and sit down. So I've got to finish the jacket, then I think I've just got the edging on the jacket and her hat um, and then just like tiny like little bits like she's got a little belt and it won't take me long to do those little accessory bits so she'll be finished this week I promise she'll be finished before the next doll comes out so I said I was going to work on Amelia and I did a little bit um, and then I said I was going to work on my Rocker Bunny socks and I think I did but I don't have them here no I don't have them here in front of me but I think I did about this much so they're not finished um, and yeah, I put on, I think one night I was like, oh, I should do some crafting when I was lying on the sofa going, I'm so tired. Um, so I did a couple of rounds, but that's it. Um, so I might finish them. I will try to work on them. They're there again. They're another good travel project because it's just round and round knitting. Um, and then... I am excited about this one. So this could have been a finished object. I'm so close. I'm not going to put it on. A, because it's quite warm in here today. Um, and this is the hottest thing I've ever worked on. Um, if I'm a reader, because I was working on this last night. Um, my granny cardigan. It's so close to being finished. As I said, I nearly thought about trying to finish it. And I can't lie to you, because you'd all you'd all catch me out. But I thought, oh, I could finish this, and then I could tell them that it was a finished object. <laughs> and I was like, no, that's naughty. You didn't finish it in February, therefore you can't claim it in February. But I have one round of the collar to do, maybe two, and it's finished. So I'm not going to put it on because. I'll talk about, I'll show it off properly in my EAYF video, but also in a finished object section next month for my March Roundup. But I will hold it up to show you. So this is by Kelly of, I'm going to pop it on screen. I think it's, I'm not going to say in case I get it wrong. I'll pop it on screen and I'll pop the links below to Kelly's YouTube channel. This is the Granny Hexagon Cardigan. I'll stand up. And... It's nearly finished. And oh my God, I'm obsessed with it. 
It's so heavy. It's eight balls of wool, which is why it's quite heavy. Um, but when I showed you last month, I think I was, I'd done one sleeve, I think. I'm not really sure, but I finished the sleeves and um, I'll talk about this more next month, but I've modified the sleeve because you make the hexagon, which is here. If you can see the hexagon there. All of this section here is the hexagon. So you basically make two hexagons and then where you can see the changing color here, that's where I then rejoined. And this is the, the sleeve effectively. You just knit it till it's the perfect length. This is really wide and it's a little bit billowy around my arm. Um, and I wanted a slightly fitter, I want a slightly closer fit. So I put some decreases in here, um, going up the central panel. And then I pop some rib on the sleeve. <clears throat> so I've done the sleeve. You can see here, again, that's where I seamed the hexagon um, to join it. So we've got two sleeves, obviously. Um, and then you can see here again where I've joined the hexagon. So there's the hexagons. And then I've added infill rows here to join it to give me room for my neck. And then I've joined it here in a shock of blue. And if I say so myself, I was going to fall off the chair. If I say so myself, I think I've done very well with the colour choice. Because I wanted something that didn't look granny-like. Does that make sense? So I know I'm making a granny cardigan. But I wanted something that was a bit more my style. And there's no getting away from it's granny crochet because it's trebles. And if you are a crocheter, you will look at that. Or even a, a knitter, you'll look at that and go, yeah, that's crochet. But I didn't want it to look... I don't want to offend anyone. I, don't, I didn't want it to look like an old lady card. Like I, I wanted it to look like something that I would wear. Not something that my nan had crocheted. If I, like... You know what I'm trying to say, don't you? But I don't want to, I don't want to offend anyone. Because there are some amazing crochet cardigans out there. And when I've seen other people's, that's so I was like, ah, because rainbows wouldn't, the rainbow pattern from Kelly, that wouldn't really suit me personally. It looks amazing. And I love the way the rainbow grows out. And I was like, oh, I wonder how I could adapt that pattern and make it look, when I say old ladies, because it's called granny, <laughs> I make, mean make it look unlike a granny, if that makes sense. I'll stop digging now. You know what I mean. Um, so I've really tried with my colour placements and make this kind of monochrome. It's predominantly a grey cardigan with just these flashes of blue. And this yarn just fizzes and pops. So what I did was I then decided where I wanted to add um, a collar in line with the pattern. But what I did was I didn't want to do more grannies because I really enjoyed doing the ribbon and this is front post back post crochet which gives you a kind of crochet rib effect and I really really loved doing that technique so I wanted to do the same on the collar which is what we've got so you can see here here's the bottom of the cardigan um and then you pick up stitches on this side and you basically crochet up, down, around, and then around the bottom and back around. And that's one round. And it takes me about, in this rib, about 45 minutes to do one round, which is why I was like, oh, maybe with another hour I could eke it out. And I was like, no, don't rush it. But I really love, I'm worried about dropping it in my coffee. <laughs> so we've got this rib effect here, which I think is looking lovely and what I've done because we are going around a corner and I didn't want this to pucker um I've done a modification here so I um I've ribbed up to the corner and then I've restarted the corner but in this corner section I've um just done some extra chains so I like did one treble uh, or um UK treble US double the patterns written for US terminology so I did a double but I did two chains, double, two chains, and then I carried on with the rib. And I did that for a few rounds. And then where it's then getting bigger, um, I've now 
switch that out slightly. So I did two chains, a double, two chains, a double, two chains. So you can see that I've tried to space the corner out so that when I give it a wash and a block, um, I can pin that out into a point so I'll get a neat corner edge. So again, I'm a little bit proud of myself for that because I've never done that before. I'm not a designer. And I was like, how do I tackle that problem? Kelly has been amazing on Instagram. I messaged her and it's like, right, I want to do the collar, but I think I want to do a ribbed collar rather than um, a granny collar as written using the doubles. What should I do? How did I do the set of rows? So Kelly very kindly taught me through how she would approach it, which is great. Um, and yeah, I'm obsessed. I love it so much. It will be finished this month, definitely, in time for EAYF. I've got to sew all my ends in. Kelly in the YouTube video sews hers in as she goes, but I'm glad I didn't because I think I mentioned last month I had to rip it back. I got as far as joining it and then when I put it on, it didn't fit. And I was like, why are you making the large? You're clearly an extra large. Um, so I ripped it all back, but I'm glad I didn't sew the ends in because I wouldn't have been able to rip it back so easy. And then just in case I need to do any other modifications, I've left all my ends. So I do need to sew my ends in. But I put it on last night to show Mark and I was like, I had it on for about five minutes. Like, I've got to take it off. It's so hot. But it's eight balls, eight and a half balls of wool. I'm using this amazing DK yarn from Gemma of The Little Grey Girl. And all the yarn is by Gemma. So it's taken, all told it will be, if I finish both of these, I would have used nine balls. I'm obviously not going to use any more of this. So I think I'll end up with two more. I'll probably do two more rounds, I think, just to be safe in terms of the width to make sure it joins nicely in the middle and doesn't look like it's too small if that makes sense so I want it to like meet nicely so I'm definitely going to do one more round I might do a second round so I think I'll, I'll use about half of that probably so about eight balls of wool it's taken for my size which is the extra large but it is amazing I love it so much but I'm not going to put it on until it's a finished object to show you but thank you to Kelly if you watch this um, for your support because I've really loved it. And Kelly's coming to East Anglia Yarn Festival. Um, so I'll get to meet Kelly in person, hopefully, and show her my cardigan. Um, this is the make-along for EAYF. If you watch the video interview that I did with Laura, um, who is the um, event organiser for East Anglia, um, you'll know we've talked about the pattern and why they're doing a make-along and how they chose the patterns, etc. So hop back and watch that video um, from last month if you want to know more about EAYF. And hopefully I'll see some of you there. Please come along and say hello. Um, so not a finished object, but nearly a finished object. So whilst I wore the bag of shame, it's nearly done. It can go on the table. <clears throat> so... I'm very much looking forward to getting that finished. Um, and that was my works in progress. The other things that I did work on in the month was some swatching. Oh, did I do this in January when I didn't show it? If you've seen this already, I apologize. I don't think you have seen this. And I think it may be in the end of January I did this rather than February. And I think I might have forgotten to put it in my last video. But... Um, Brother number one, my middle brother, and the oldest of three, um, is getting married in May. And um, I'm contemplating making a dicky bow, bow tie, for me and a tie for Mark for us to wear so that we are coordinated. Um, Sam from the Irish Knitting Podcast, I'll pop Sam's details below. Um, Sam has a bow tie pattern. Um, so I did a little swatch. Um, this is done on a 2.5 mil needle. Um, so I've done a little swatch and the, one of them is on 2.5. Oh, that's right, it's, it's the, um, the edge in. So I did here, I just did a normal knit back and forth. Um, then I put a line in to distinguish, and then this side I've slipped the slips, I've slipped the edge stitches, uh, which gives a much neater edge in. So I think I'm going to do that one. But Sam's got a dicky bow pattern, and um, I wanted to just check out what the tension looked like, and I think that's really nice. I like that. Um, but what I've also done, and this is my own pattern. I've tried to come up with 
a bow, um, a knitted tie pattern for Mark. So Mark's going to wear a tie with his outfit, and I'm going to wear a bow tie. Um, yeah, see, I don't think I definitely don't think I've shown you this. Um, and yeah, so we've got the same yarn. It's not going to be this yarn. It will be red. But this is um, Jameson's Spindrift, which I had in my stash in this lovely yellow. Um, and I wanted to just do some swatching with it so then I can order some yarn and um, then get going on the actual item. But this will hopefully be, so this is double thickness. So I probably need to take, I can't, I'll, I'll count the stitches before I bind it off, but I probably need to make it four stitches slimmer I think for Mark um, and I think I'm going to try and do a provisional cast on when I actually get it going so that I can then graph the edge because even though I can probably try and graph that where I've done the cast on I'm not sure if I sew that um, it will it'll still have the lump a bump on the outside I won't be able to get that on the inside so I think if I can do a provisional cast on which I'm not sure about on this many stitches because it's only going to be a little a little piece. If I can provisionally cast on, I can graft it um, together at the end. If not, you might not notice it because of the outfit that he's wearing, but we'll see. So I need to work out how to do that bit, but I'm really happy um, with this. And then I did do it, try to do it with a flat piece similar to this, but it's not thick enough, if that makes sense, because it's almost just, it's really thin. So it doesn't, it kind of like flapped about a bit when I, I that we're worried it would flap about a bit. So by doing it here, it's it's double thickness. It's got a bit more substance to it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I need to order the wool now because I've got until May. My bow tie won't take more than a couple of hours on a weekend to do, I don't think. But this is going to take much longer because of course this needs to be really long and it's knitting in the round. Um, so it's going to take a while, but once I've got it cast on, um, it should be quite quick because I can just pick it up. That That's kind of like the perfect thing at lunchtime to do, um, at work. So I need to try and get some red yarn for this, but yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. So a little bit of swatching, um, at the start of the month to, um, create something that we can wear and then we'll have it's very cute isn't it we'll have his and his <laughs> uh bow tie and actual tie so yeah stay tuned for more on that that is the plan but of course the wedding is at the beginning of may it's now the beginning of march i don't even have the wool let alone start on it so mark did say to me yesterday where are we with the ties for the wedding I was like I need to order the yarn but I've done the swatching which is the hardest bit so I just need to get the yarn and then get going it'll get done <laughs> and if it doesn't he's got a red tie as a backup but it means I need to find a red bow tie so if we can get them done it'll be really lovely and a bit cutesy Aww. um so that's all the knitting that I've done this month which isn't a lot I do apologise. I will try better next month. <laughs> I think I've said in previous videos that I love the fact that I have this little YouTube channel to keep me, keep me accountable almost because, yeah, like I joked with myself last week, like I've got nothing to show YouTube, which is why I made a quick bit of progress on Amelia and I made some progress on my cardigan. I've only really done that ribbon since last week as well. So when I focus, I can get quite a lot done. I'm very disciplined. But yeah, I just need to find a balance between a crazy day at work and coming home and just like lying on the sofa. Which is no good. It's like going to the gym, isn't it? Which I don't do. Like if you come home and just sit on the sofa, you know you're not going back out. You need to like go out. So I need to like get bits ready, like on the end of the sofa. So I come home and I can just grab it and start. Because once I start knitting, I'm okay. Otherwise, it's like Mark's jumper. I lie there and go, oh, we should go and do the jumper. Oh, I can't be bothered. But I will make some progress on his jumper this month as well. I promise. I wanted it done by March. That was my my, my own little goal. We'll see how much I get done. Um, <clears throat> right, then stash acquisitions. 
Um, I'm only going to rattle through these because a lot of you will likely have already watched the live video where I did show off my Unravel purchases. Um, but for those of you that haven't watched the live, I will very quickly show what I bought. And if you want some more information about the projects, go back and watch the live video. But I bought this lovely um, kit fade set from Helen of The Wool Kitchen. Um, this makes this triangular shawl pattern um and when you wind the wool you can wind them either you can you can either just do it as five individual skeins but what i'm going to try and do is wind it as one big ball so i get the fade it's easier to get the fade going rather than having to bring new yarn in you still have to bring the yarn you know what i mean but i'm going to try and wind it in a cake so i've got it as one cake rather than five little balls but i bought that which i'm very excited about um, <clears throat> very excited about using because it's my colours, right? It's teal and grey, but um, that's going in my stash. I'm not working on that for the foreseeable. It'll sit in the stash until this time next year. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I met Lola from, I think her name was Lola, um, from uh, Third Vault Yarns. Um, and I just loved this grey with these kind of, I think this is called Zip Yarn where you just get the color at one end. Um, so I bought two skeins of this, and this is gonna become a dotted raise, and I'm really excited by this yarn. So this is gonna be one of my new cast-ons for March. I want to wind the wool, cast it on, get it in a project bag, and then it's ready to go. So if I then want to work on it, it's it's good to go. So this yarn's not going in my stash. Um, in the crates, this will be wound on um, cast-on this month. So really excited by those. Um, I then bought this shawl kit by um, Sharon Carter of um, Dragon Hill Studio. And this is going to make a Tunisian crochet shawl, which is called the joinery shawl. So as you can see, you get these zigzags of colors that gives you the edging around the shawl and the rest of it is just standard um, sort of Tunisian crochet, Tunisian crochet stitch. Um, it's done on a six mil Tunisian crochet hook, um, but you only need these two skeins or balls of yarn to make the pattern. So that's going to be the self stripe that will give me the coloured coloured edge in, and then just a standard grey. <clears throat> I wanted to buy this, I've said this in the in the live, I wanted to buy this kit at Wonderwall Wales last year and I got in the car to drive home on the Sunday and I was like, ah, oh, you didn't go back and get it. I was like, oh, well, it's not meant to be. But when I went to Unravel, um, Sharon was there um, and had kits available. So like, there we go, it was meant to be. So I picked up the kit and it's also very timely because Toft are doing a Tunisian crochet along. I'm going to say Tunisian crochet knit along. No, Tunisian crochet along, which starts on Monday um, for the week. Kerry's got some Tunisian crochet patterns in her um, quarterly magazines, which I'll talk about in a moment, and is hosting a Tunisian crochet along. So it isn't a pattern that I would wear. I'll show you. It's a, um, a headband, not something that Mark or I would wear. Um, but I thought it was quite actually really good timing because I've watched some videos, but I've never had a go myself. So rather than having a go directly onto this project. I'm going to grab a ball of yarn from my Toft stash and I'm going to follow along with Kerry and make the headband and then I'll give it to my mum or one of my nieces or sister-in-laws or someone. It'll it'll be a gift for someone. Um, but I'll make that and then I can kind of do the crochet along and learn a little bit about Tunisian crochet and then I can have a go at this. So this is also not going in the stash, although I didn't count this. When I said earlier, I might have three new cast-ons. I didn't count this one. But my thinking with this one is, Sharon is going to be at Wonderwall again this year. And we were talking about that on the stand. I too am going to be at Wonderwall this year because I'm again helping out on the Ammonite Yarns um, stand, my local yarn shop. So if I get stuck with a pattern, Sharon will be there and I can walk over and go, hi, can you help me please? So I feel like I want to get it started. And then if I'm unsure of increasing or decreasing or it doesn't look neat, I can go and ask Sharon for some help. And she did say that she would help me. So we'll see. But I really love this and I've been coveting it for a while. So I bought that a 
I did say I wasn't going into a lot of detail on these, didn't I? And I have. Um, and then the other thing I bought, which I don't know where it's gone, is I bought a Niddy Noddy. You'll have to go back and watch the live. It's the wooden spinning tool that you can do yarn in a figure of eight. So some of the projects that I fogged last year need to be um, re-skeened up and then washed because they've been like knit up in a half finished project for like four or five years. So I bought a Niddy Noddy so that I can skein the yarn up and then I can wash it. It can forget what it was and then I can reuse the yarn for a new project. But I don't know where the Niddy Noddy is. It's not on the desk. Who can say? Um, and then there are two other um, acquisitions that you haven't yet seen because I didn't show them off on the live. This isn't um, this isn't wool, but this the the latest Toft Quarterly magazine has arrived. So this is a quarterly um, magazine from Toft that features I think it's ten patterns. It has five crochet patterns and five knitting patterns. Each quarter is a different theme. I've shown some of these off um, in previous videos and I have made um, a number of items from previous projects. Um, this one's um, all about their new pastel range of colours which is ahead of the launch of the new Toft Alexandra's Garden um, flower book. Um, that's the Tunisian crochet headband that we're going to be making. She said absolutely not my style, I have no hair to, <laughs> to hold up. Um, so I'm going to have a go at making that. Um, so the pattern's in the quarterly magazine. So I'm going to get going with that one. So that arrived um, this quarter. And the other one to show off um, is, this is permitted yarn on my, I'm not buying any yarn because this is part of an ongoing subscription, which is the yarn I'm allowed to buy. And this is the latest from Attic Spin Dye from Andy and Angela in the Beatrix Potter collection. So this is... The Tale of Miss Tiggy Winkle. So this month we have a little hedgehog stitch marker. Um, and then you get a little bag of goodies with the subscription. So I've got a little laundry bag um, with the Tale of Mrs. Tiggy Winkle's written on it and a cute little peg. Um, we always get like a little contrasting mini, or oh, micro I think these are, I think they're like five grams. So we've got that. Um, and then there's always a little lavender bag which just smells lovely with the that month's um, subscription. So obviously Miss Tiggy Winkle on there. So have those. And then the yarn itself. <coughs> See, this needs to be another project I need to cast on. Um, so the yarn itself now for um, Miss Tiggy Winkle, the tails of Miss Tiggy Winkle. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Sorry, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Um, which is glory. I love the way this is colour matched to, yeah, to the image that they show. I love the way that they match these colours. And this is kind of true, it's quite grey and gloomy here, so this is quite a true to life reflection. So we've got a little bit of speckling here, um, and then these gorgeous pinks and the browns into a little bit of the grey. So this is this month's um, Beatrix Potter subscription from Attic Spin Dye from Andy and Angela. Um, now I think this is the sixth subscription. And I did say, so I know what I'm gonna make with these. So I have all six in the Beatrix Potter collection and they've just been coming into the flat. I've been showing you off and then they've been going and living in the stash. I did say that when I got to six, five or six, I would start the project, but that also wasn't on the list when I said I would start. This will. It will be a long-term project, this one, because already now this is going to be six skeins of yarn. But I'm going to make the Vertices Unite baby blanket. Not for the baby, just for me to lie on the sofa under, which I think will really show off this yarn so well because the sections of the Vertices Unite, what I'm hoping to do is kind of adapt it slightly and rather than just work a little section, I'm going to try and expand the section slightly so the pattern will get bigger but so that I can use up the vast majority of this yarn in each of the sections. So we'll have the Peter Rabbit section and the Je uh, the Taylor of Gloucester section and the Mrs. Tiggy Winkle section. So I need to work out roughly how I'm going to adapt the pattern, but I think that will show off the yarn so, so lovely um, because it's mostly just simple garter stitch panels. So I think that will be really nice, but that's a long-term project. Um, 
Although no, that says part five, so maybe I've got five and I've ordered six. Six is the duck. I can't remember. And I'm using my phone, so I can't find out. You'll get six next month. <laughs> um, so I've got that yarn. So that is permitted spend. I'm allowed to buy yarn. <laughs> when it's part of a subscription. That's part of my I'm not buying yarn is going well, isn't it? Yarn show purchases were also on my I'm allowed to buy yarn at the show. Um, so that's it, I think, for everything that I had on my video. Not a lot of knitting progress. Um, if you're new here and this is one of your first ones, hop back to watch some of the previous finish off. Go and watch the January one because there was a lot of knitting content, especially, and some crochet content in the January one when I finished seven things and I was working on a number of items. So go and hop back on that one. But I do like, I do say this is the, the real life unedited Martin Knit 365 podcast. So you get me warts and all. <laughs> and if I don't finish many things and I don't do much knitting, then I'll tell you. <laughs> Rather than fake it till I make it. Um, so yeah, there we go. That is everything I think for this month. So um, we did the sock set giveaway um, where we had the lovely sock subscription set from Lillian Maud. Um, I've done the draw and I'm going to pop the footage in. Um, I'll pop the footage in now, actually. Right, it's me. Hi. <laughs> from the past, it is the 1st of March. I don't know why I'm looking at my watch. You can't see that, can you? 1st of March and I'm going to do the draw for the Lily and Maud sock set so I can contact the winner. So I'm going to flick you around. Okay, so we are on commentpicker.com. I've put the URL in of the video. I've told it to take out duplicate users and I've told it to look for sock as the comment because that's what you needed to do to be in with a chance to win. So we will tell it to start. And the winner is Net Knit, that beautiful sock yarn. Love watching you. You brighten up my day. Thank you very much for your lovely comment. You are a winner. I'm going to go and find your comment now and get in touch with you. So congratulations to Net Knit. I have messaged you and I've left an answer on your comment below for you to email me. Um, if you watch this and you haven't seen the comment, please hop back and then um, get in touch and I can get that prize out to you. Um, so congratulations. Um, we've got another giveaway running, which is to win the, um, the East Anglia Yarn Festival merchandise, um, from Laura. So you've got until the 17th of March to, um, watch that video and comment to be in with a chance of winning the goodies from EOIF. So hop back and watch that video if you've not done that and then get your entries in by the 17th and I'll do the draw just before I head off for the, um, the show. Coming up then, the rest of the month, so um, the knit along, crochet along that I'm doing with Gemma, um, Louise and Hannah as part of my first Knit365 collaboration. Um, I was going to start it now around this weekend, around my birthday, but in the UK, I mentioned on one of the lives previously, in the UK, the UK Royal Mail was hit by a cyber attack and there was no international shipping for nearly a month and it affected many, many businesses, not just yarn businesses. There was no international post leaving the UK unless it went by specialist courier. So some of the yarn has now started arriving in the US and Australia. I've been tagged in pictures on Instagram where we know it's coming to rest of the world. So the yarn has started to arrive, but just to give everyone another couple of weeks to make sure that the yarn arrives so that we can all start together, because you know I want this um, collaboration and, and knit and crochet along to be as inclusive as possible which is why we've got a knit pattern and a crochet pattern and I don't want to start and then a few people feel left out because their yarn hasn't arrived so I know the international yarn has started to arrive if you've not had yours yet it will be on its way to you um, I said I know that parcels from all the batches have now started to arrive so what I'm going to propose to do is we push it back by two weeks so we're going to have a launch weekend of Friday the 24th of March and I will do a live probably about four o'clock UK time so that Louise and Hannah can join. 
Um, but I will confirm the time on that one. But there'll be a video live on the 24th of March. And then I'll go live again on Sunday the 26th. So if you miss the Friday, you can hopefully join in the Sunday. I'll do a different time zone. And maybe I'll try an early morning Sunday one, which will be tea time in Australia. So that the Southern Hemisphere followers can join live. So we might try... I think I worked it out 7 a.m. UK time on the Sunday morning will be 6 p.m. Sunday evening um, in Australia, in Sydney, I think, which I learned on the last live that are three time zones in Australia and a different time zone in New Zealand. So we'll, we'll work out the times, but basically if you stick a pin in the dates for Friday the 24th and Sunday the 26th of March, um, that's when I'm going to be casting on my knit shawl and my crochet shawl. I might do the knit on the Friday, the crochet on the Saturday. I might try and do a little bit of both during each, but I'll hopefully get Gemma along and Louise and Hannah. There'll be more videos then spread out throughout April when we'll check in on progress. And if anyone needs some support, there will be lots of support available. So um, hope you don't mind pushing that back by two weeks, but it just means that we can just make sure that everybody um, everybody's yarn has arrived and then we can all join in together. So that's coming up on the channel in a couple of weeks. And then the week before that, so the video will hopefully be live on Monday, the 20th of March, will be my East Anglia Yarn Festival behind the scenes video. Um, EOIF takes place on the 17th, 18th and 19th. So the 17th is the Friday night, 17th of March. That's the knit night. And then the show is the Saturday, Sunday. So I'll try and film some footage behind the scenes over the weekend. So I'll have a behind the yarn show, behind the scenes at a yarn show um, video on Monday the 20th, hopefully. And then we can all go and squish some yarn and smell some yarn. And I can show you all the things that we get up to over that weekend. And maybe, I'm not committing definitely to this, but there might be a video before that where we've got a long weekend where we're not doing it. We've got a weekend where we're not doing anything. And I haven't done one for a while where I make my list and see how much progress on my knitting and crochet projects I can get done over the Saturday, Sunday. Um, so I'm not committing to that yet, but there might be a bonus. There's definitely two more. There's two lives coming at the end of the month and there's an EOIF video, but I might do a come and sit with me. Let's cast on some projects and I've got some altering to do on a jumper for my mum. I've got some socks to um, to darn and to sort of uh, a cuff out and it helps me motivate get motivated to do those little jobs. So there might be that video. We will see how we get on. Because I also do need to finish Mark's jumper. <laughs> that, that will make an appearance definitely that weekend because we're not going anywhere, we're not doing anything. And I think that's everything that I've got. I did say, didn't I, that this would be nearly an hour. So we're just under an hour. Um, it might be just over an hour now because I actually I've got to put the footage in of the draw. But thank you so much for joining me. It started a bit... <laughs> I've got lots to do on my day off. Um, but I do really enjoy sitting down and chatting about all the things I've got done that month and the excuses and the reasons why I didn't get some things done that month. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed um, finding the time to sit down and chat to you all. There's lots more coming up on the channel. There's a really exciting, um, it's not an exclusive, but there's a really exciting secret video coming um, June, July time that I can't really talk to you about at the moment, but I'm very excited about that and I hope you will be too. Um, my sheep to skein, I met Ellie of um, Tidin Bryn Yarns, which I talked about on the live, um, and we're going to go to the farm, I think, at the end of March and meet the sheep that are going to get shorn um, in May time, I think. So we're going to go and film that and we're going to kind of see the sheep see them being shorn, go to the mill, see the yarn getting spun, go back to Ellie's and see it dyed. That'll be kind of a mini series. So that's coming and I'm excited by that because I've already started chatting to Ellie about what that will look like and penciling some dates in. So lots of stuff coming, but hopefully um, another two or three videos um, slash lives in March. So lots more content and just thank you for all being here and making this happen because as long as you keep watching my videos and commenting, um then I'll keep making them because I really enjoy trying to think about things to talk to you all about. Um, and you keep watching them when I put them up. So as long as you're here watching, I'll be here making. So yeah, really exciting. Lots of plans this year, but thank you very much for me. Um, it still makes me feel really humble and a little bit surprised that people sit down and watch my videos. Um, 
because this started out as just me trying to keep myself accountable to what I knit or don't, as we know. But let's hope the bag of shame is not going to make an appearance this month. I don't think it will, because that's going to get finished at least. Come on, we can do this. So <clears throat> I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you very much for being here. Um, if you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm f help find other people that may not know about my channel. Click that subscribe button if you watch my videos but you're not yet subscribed. It's free for you to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me to grow my channel. Again, helps YouTube find new followers. Um, and if you want to be reminded about all the content that's coming up, you can click the little bell um, and you get a little notification every time I post a new video. So I think that's everything. I now need to go and tackle today's to-do list, which is lots of admin. Like I need to take a pair of trousers to the tailor. I need to buy some batteries. I need to go to the bank. Like really boring life admin stuff that you end up taking a day off work to do. But we're gonna have some, we're gonna have some food later on and we're gonna go bowling with the family tonight to start my birthday celebration. So I'm very much looking forward to that. So thank you very much for being here. I hope that you are all well. Um, lots more coming up on the channel. And um, yeah, so until we speak again, happy crafting.